Hello, my name is Melanie Cambridge. Uh, I've been painting and teaching in oils now for several years. Um, so whether you use traditional oils or the uh, faster drying alkyds or even water mixable ones, then I hope that what I can show you today will encourage you to simply pick up your brushes and have a go. Right, I've got all of my paints here, um, a selection of colours. I, I will explain what colours we're using as we're going along. But for this simple exercise, we're going to paint a single tree. With oils, you work from dark to light. So in order to do this, I'm actually going to paint the tree first and then put the sky around it and behind it. The reason for this is oils stay wet all the time you're working with them. So we need uh, to put all the darks in rather than try and put that on top of a wet sky. It would just go chalky and frankly, it would look a bit rubbish. So starting with my rigger brush, take a little bit of liquid and I'm going to use some uh, raw umber, which is a nice dark brown. Uh, no drawing, just going to go straight in with a little bit of the brush and give ourselves um, a simple tree. I think we'll, we'll put it right in the middle here. It's quite a springy brush, and you can see I'm holding it a fair way back from, from, the, from the head, from the ferrule. Uh, you get a lovely sort of flicky movement on this. It takes a bit of practice, but it's worth sticking at it because you get a much more natural, lively brush stroke than you would perhaps if you're trying to be too neat. I think with oils, you know, just, l just let the brush do it. That, that'll do. We've got a, a fair shape of uh, possibly a horse chestnut. Um, and that's it. That's stage one. Right, clean the brush. And then we're going to move on to painting with a long, flat nylon brush. I prefer nylon rather than hog hair because I find it sort of holds its edge a lot better. You can get a sharp line with it and you can block in quickly. First thing we need to do is mix up some green paint. Now, if we take a, a good blue, like cobalt, and put a blob on the, on the palette here, rather than always cleaning the brush, I quite like the paint to stay sticky. So I just wipe off the excess paint with a bit of rag, and then we'll pick some lemon yellow. Now, instead of going straight in the middle, put the yellow alongside, and then mix slowly across. The reason for doing this is that you can control the amount of color you add and hopefully, a little bit of care, you can mix almost a yellow through to quite a bright green and then come on the other side of your painting. See how we've got a, a much, much darker, quite bluey green. Um, and that gives us one to almost three colours for our tree. Right. Taking the darkest of the colour, if we imagine the sun's coming over here, so this side of the tree is going to be in shadow. So that's where we want our, our, a little bit underneath, and on this side, that's where we want our really dark green colours. I'm imagining painting about 50 to 100 leaves every brush stroke. Don't worry about going a little bit over the tree trunk, and at the same time, if you think about it, a little bit of liquid, and then just put a little dark green on there. That's sort of the shadow under the tree. because it's, it's in full foliage, it's going to cast a big shadow. Take some paper. Wipe off your brush. Now, I'm quite lazy when I paint with oils. I'm, I don't do a lot of cleaning. And I find, as I say, that brush, it's still dry at the bottom. And the, there's only really paint in the top. I've wiped most of the paint off. So in fact, I can dip into a lighter color now, and it'll be fine. It won't pick up the underlying dark. It's sort of sticky into sticky that you're painting, rather than wet on wet. Nicely loaded brush and start to paint the lighter side of the tree with fairly delicate brush strokes. And you see, as you go into the dark, it picks up the underlying dark and goes a little bit sort of muddy and, and dull and uninteresting. So let's get this nice and bright and just put in some lighter foliage, more or less half and half. You know, there's a bit of crossover. And also, don't forget, there will be grass underneath the tree. So take your light colour and just brush it along there and you've got a very simple, with a little bit of brown in there, doesn't really matter. Let's get a bit of yellow on the top. You're almost there with your tree. A little trick is to take a little bit of pure yellow and a touch of the white. There we've got a really sort of impasto high. And just flick the odd little bit of sort of absolute sunlight quite thick paint. There's no medium on this. There's no thinner. We're just going for a little bit of extra texture. And we, could, we can even put a tiny bit of that out here where it's a sunny lawn. Or it's, it's more like a sort of parkland, isn't it? There we have the first of two stages of painting a tree. Now I'm going to paint the sky. 
clean the brush because obviously we don't want um, a green sky. That would look silly. Give it a good wipe. Perhaps a bit more paper. Now, I used cobalt blue to mix the greens for the tree. I'm going to use the same cobalt blue to mix the pale blue for the sky. Because in a landscape, we want... Blue's quite a... a um, some people call it a mother colour. It, it sort of has a strong effect on your mixes. And to use a completely different turquoisey blue, it doesn't look as natural. All I can say is try it both ways, and I think you'll begin to see what I mean. Right, so cobalt blue and quite a lot of titanium white. Did you notice I didn't put any thinner in there? It's the paint itself is lovely and buttery. It doesn't necessarily need it. Right, we're going to start by ignoring the edge of the tree because obviously it's all wet. So we'll start off and just put an area of blue at the top of it. We're just going for a nice plain sky. Now, even in a plain sky, as you get down towards the horizon, it generally gets a lot lighter. So don't clean your brush. Just dip it in the white paint and carry on down to about just, just over halfway, taking care not to touch the edge of the tree at this stage. Wipe the brush off. And as we get towards the bottom, I'm just going to add a little bit of this Naples yellow light. It's a beautiful, creamy colour. You think, oh, I can mix that. No, go out and buy a tube because it's, it's just got a lovely quality for painting a, a creaminess. I can't explain it, but you won't regret it. It's Naples yellow light. There's different forms of Naples yellow. And the light is, is a very, very pale cream. It's, uh, it, it's very handy for, for sort of patches of sunlight in the bottom of skies or little white bits on clouds. I find I use it quite a lot. We've got a graded sky, haven't we? It's a plain blue sky, but it comes down and softens towards the horizon. However, we've still got the sky holes and the edge of the tree to tackle. Here's where you just need to be a little bit more careful. First thing to remember, we've still got the pale blue, so we load the brush up. Light pressure on the brush, and as you come in towards the tree, you will pick up dark green paint because it's wet. So, wipe it off, reload your brush, and do it again. And inside the tree there, you'll definitely pick up quite a bit of the blue. But if you think about it, you know, little sky holes for the birds to fly through, they're not pure clean sky, they've got twigs and branches in the way. So if those little sky holes are a little bit kind of dirty with a little bit of green, it doesn't really matter. It'll look more natural. Now, just one last thing. These sky holes are kind of pale blue because they're alongside the pale blue bit in the sky. When we come down here, the sky's not pale blue anymore. So back to that nice creamy color, Naples yellow and white. Again, really no thinner. It's, it's just paint. And then in here, with a much paler colour, and you see how delicately, I mean, it's difficult to see, I know, with, the, with, with film, but how there's very little pressure and a lot of wiping off of excess paint just to get that, get that feel. Because we couldn't have painted the whole of the blue sky and then put the tree on top. If you're going to do that, you've got to let it dry. And with oil paint, it takes a day, it might take two days for it to dry, which is too long to wait. We want to get this done in one go. So that's why we're having this little bit of extra effort to just get our sky blending in around the tree. Bit of practice, it's not difficult. Finally, if you've noticed, I've lost a little bit of my tree trunk. It, it's looking a bit weedy. So change the brush, go back to the rigger, go back to a little bit of liquid and that raw umber that we started with. Let's load the brush again, get it nice and flowy. We'll sort of work the brush so that you've got plenty of paint on it. And then what you've got to do, just take a little bit of it's a bit like almost drawing through mud. So drag the brush and put one or two of those branches back in. We'll thicken up that tree trunk down there. But you don't see all of it. Obviously, there. Oh, you can see now how wet the paint is. It's it's more difficult to see now. We could have a little extra branch on there, couldn't we? That would be nice. Let's just put that in there. That sort of had a bit of extra growth. The odd twig, and there might be a little bit of twig sort of dangling down there. There we are, and. That's pretty much it. 
you've got you've got a lovely summer tree, nice sunny sky behind it, and it's all been painted in one go. Hardly any drawing, and we've used one, two, three, four colours. It's that simple. Pick up your brush and have a go.